Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how to set up your Aris router. And before I start, I want to remind you that if my video will help you, please support my work. Half of all donations I send to animal shelters. All details are in the description down below. The first step is to turn on the router. Take the power adapter. Plug one end of the power adapter into a wall outlet. Connect the other end to the router. When it's powered on, a light will illuminate. It might take a few minutes for the router to fully power up. Next, plug the cable from your broadband provider or modem into the internet port. Now you should reset the router to its factory settings. Hold down the reset button on the router for 10 seconds. Wait for the lights on the router to begin flashing. Occasionally, this button can be found inside the router casing to avoid accidental presses. Use a slim object to press it down. The router will reboot, resetting all the settings to their original factory defaults. Connect one end of the Ethernet cable that came with the router to an Ethernet port. Connect the other end to your computer or laptop's Ethernet port. Please wait a few minutes for connection. Awesome! Your router is now connected to your computer. Now you will need to set it up. Before we get started, I'll show you another way to connect the router in case you don't have an Ethernet cable or your computer doesn't have an Ethernet port. Connect the router to the power adapter and cable from your internet provider. This will turn on the Wi-Fi. If the router is new and hasn't been set up yet, the Wi-Fi network will be named after the router itself. Your router has a unique Wi-Fi network name and password printed on a label. Connect to it. Great job connecting to the router. Now let's move on to the setup process. First, open your web browser and visit the URL you see on the screen. Use the URL bar instead of the search bar. At the beginning you will see a form with a login and password. Usually it is admin and password. If these credentials are wrong, then find label on your router. The credentials are often printed on the bottom of the device. If none of this works, it means that your router has already been configured and someone has changed the login and password. If you can't find out the login credentials, just reset the router to factory settings. And then log in to the router's personal cabinet using the standard credentials. If your router settings do not look like mine, it means that your router has a different firmware. I made a video for every firmware type. You can find all the links in the description down below. I want to warn you right away that there are many firmware versions and they may differ slightly. But don't worry, you will succeed, just watch the video and follow the instructions. So, as I mentioned earlier, the first step is to enter your username and password to access the router's admin panel. At this point, you'll also see an option to choose the language for the router's admin interface. You can select from several available languages depending on the model, but in this case, I'm going to leave it set to English. It's the default and most documentation supports it. Once you've entered the username and password and selected the language, click the apply button to proceed. After that, a pop-up window may appear. This is a security prompt asking if you want to change the default login password for the admin panel. This step is extremely important for your security. 
Leaving the default password makes it easier for someone to access and change your network settings without permission. So I strongly recommend changing it. To do that, click right here to open the password change page. On this page, you'll see three fields. In the first field, enter your current password, the one you just used to log in. In the second field, type your new password. Make sure it's strong and hard to guess. And in the third field, retype your new password again to confirm it. The password must be at least eight characters long, but ideally you should use a mix of letters, numbers, and symbols to make it more secure. You might also see a field labeled login timeout. This setting determines how long your session in the router's admin panel will remain active when you're not using it. For example, if you set the timeout to 900 seconds, that's 15 minutes, and you don't interact with the interface during that time, the system will automatically log you out. This feature helps protect your router from unauthorized access in case you leave your computer unattended while logged in. Once you've made all the changes, click apply to save them. Now, let's move on and change the Wi-Fi network name and password. To do this, go to the Basic Setup tab and then click on the menu option also called Basic Setup. In this section, you'll see a field labeled Wireless Network Name. Here you can enter a custom name for your Wi-Fi network. This is the name that will appear when you search for Wi-Fi networks on your phone, laptop, or other devices. Right below that, there's another field called Wi-Fi Security Key. This is where you'll set the password that protects your wireless network. Just like the admin password, the Wi-Fi password must be at least eight characters long, and it's best to include a combination of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. If your router supports dual-band Wi-Fi, you'll see similar options for the five gigahertz network as well. You can change the name and password for that network too, or simply copy the same ones if you want all devices to connect automatically. If you don't need one of the bands, for example, if you want to disable the 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz network, you can do that here as well. Just uncheck the box next to the network you don't want to use. When you're done making changes, click the apply button to save your new settings. You'll see a message saying, your settings are being saved. It may take up to one minute to write the settings. Please do not close the window or turn off your router while the settings are being applied. Once the settings are saved, your Wi-Fi connection will restart with the new name and password. If you were previously connected to the router via Wi-Fi, your device will be disconnected. Now you need to reconnect using the new Wi-Fi network name and password that you just set. Once reconnected, check if your internet connection is working. The easiest way to do this is to open a browser and try searching for something on Google. If the internet still isn't working, don't panic. Try restarting your router. To do this, unplug the power cable from the router, wait for about 10 seconds, and then plug it back in. Now wait a couple of minutes until the router fully powers on. Once the lights stabilize, try Googling something again to check if the connection is active. If the internet still doesn't work at this point, you'll need to call your internet provider. They will give you the exact information about your internet connection type and any additional settings you may need to configure. That's all. If my video was useful, please support my work. I send half of all donations to animal shelters. All the details are in the description below.